Oh, get you ready for the Syracuse home opener here in 2020. Brian Higgins across town, Trill Williams. And Trill, a home game this week. How, how does that sound in this strange, weird season to, to finally actually get to stay at home and play one in the Dome this weekend? It, I mean, it's a home game, but it's not going to really feel like a home game without our fans being there. So, you know, we're going to be missing we miss our fans really much. That's what I've been wondering about. You've seen it on the, from the other side with these last two road games and no fans. How, how much home field advantage is there this year? What, what can you still get out of playing at home this week? Just being in the dome, you know, that's tradition right there. But I feel like if we can get some sound, some sound pumping through the speakers, that helps help too. I guess you can get it up to what, 70 decibels? You can get it right up to the, the limit and uh, get it going in there. Uh, has that been weird? Uh, have you noticed it? What, what's it been like with the fake crowd noise in there the last two weeks? Um, like on the road, like a couple teams have did, like North Carolina has, uh, they did it, uh, Pitt did it. But when you're on the field, you really can't tell that there's no fans, but you just listen and it sounds like there are, but when you really like look around, you're like, oh, wow, there's no fans out here. What do you think it's going to be like to get back in the dome this week with the idea that, hey, new roof on the building and it's going to be a completely different look, uh, looking up and looking around that you had the last couple of years? Um, I say it's going to be like a fresh start. So new, new, New field, new dome, new team when we go out there. It's a new feeling. How much do you guys feel like a fresh start here after the, the first two weeks didn't go uh, the way you want? How important is that, I guess, mindset here going into this week? We're not leaving our field unless we win it. That's, that's how I feel. How have you guys kind of handled the first two weeks uh, on defense? We know the offense is struggling and they're, they're working on it, but you guys have been right there in the game through really three quarters the last two weeks and it's gone away in the fourth. How tough is it to handle things like that where it, it's been, I guess, within your reach into the fourth, but not quite there down the stretch? Um, you know, that's just something that like, as a team, like we just got to work harder in practice and, and, you know, get our wind up and, and play all four quarters. Cause I feel like the last two games, we, we played hard in first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, and we kind of died down in the fourth quarter. And that's something we got to work on as a team. But, you know, as Coach White being the leader of the defense, you know, he, he's going to get us right. How's he been this year? We, we've talked so much about him coming in and the 3-3-5 the three, three, defense and the changes you guys have made. What, what's it been like working with uh, Coach White uh, on defense and, and getting this new defense on the field here, which has looked pretty good through two weeks? As, as you can see, the first two games, well, how we look as a team on defense and, and the points that we let up, we, we, we look really good. And his system is perfect for the players that we have on this team. And I'm waiting to see what we could do throughout the rest of the season. Hey, you say the system is perfect for the players. I think a lot of that is, hey, three, three, five. That means five DBs. So there's a lot of good DBs running around. Hey, hey, we know about you. We know about Dre. We know about Iffy. Tell me about these, these young guys. Jihad Carter gets his first career start last week and leads the way with 11 tackles. I think we saw Garrett Williams lead the way with nine tackles the first week. Neil Nunn gets in there for a few series. He's blowing people up. What's it been like to watch these young guys play? You know, they've been good. You know, watching them in practice, they, they make a lot of plays. But something that I, I picked up on that they do, they ask a lot of questions. You know, like a lot of young guys come in and they don't really ask that many questions, but they ask questions like they've been on this team for a long time. And that's really good to see. How even more important, I guess, is it that this year, I mean, any young guy wouldn't know uh, the defense coming in, but especially that you guys are learning it too. How, how much does it help you to, I guess, uh, say things out loud at, at this point when you're all kind of learning it at the same time? I mean, learning, I first learned defense was, was kind of hard, you know, switching the system and learning a lot of new plays, but like taking extra time to come in, like they, they would want to come in with us and, and, and learn it. And even through the pandemic, you know, having the Zoom calls and I was doing it that way, which was kind of tough. Um, we found a way and we got it done. I want to ask you about just one of the guys on your offense, and it really doesn't have anything to do with offense, but that's Rex Culpepper. He mm -hmm. throws his first touchdown in three years. You've been around. You know the whole story. Coming back from cancer, it, it's wild to see a moment like that. What, what was that like for the team with Rex last week? I mean, we, we had needed a spark on offense, you know, and he gave us that spark and he threw a touchdown. And, and we, was, we was excited for him and he earned it. That said, though, you know Rex, like setting aside the football. Can you describe this dude to us in, in any way that makes sense? He's a, he's a competitor, I said that. No matter, no matter what we do, even if we're playing uh, ping pong, he, he's, a, he's a funny guy.
That dude, I mean, I'll say this. He, he's got to be about as unique a guy that you've ever been around, right? Man. <laughs> he, need, he need his own TV show. I say that. He needs his own show. I'd say we, we did something with him a couple of years ago, and it was nuts. It was completely <laughs> insane. And then we thought about that idea, and I don't know if there'd be any way to control that show. That it would be a show that would be almost impossible, I guess, to completely to completely wrap your arms around. It would be so wacky. Yeah. Nah, he he's a he's a at the end of the day, now nah, he is a you no know, good guy. You know, he's easy to talk to. I feel like he t he took a, a more role this year as being the leader too, as well. And you know he he's gonna be all right. All right, let me uh, Trill, get your uh, quick thoughts here on Georgia Tech. They got a freshman at quarterback. And Jeff Sims is pretty good here uh, mm -hmm. through two weeks, all things considered. What do, what do you see when you look at this young guy that you're going to be going against here this weekend? Uh, he's very talented, you know. He, he got a lot of – he's going to get more experience throughout the year and, and throughout uh, his college career. But I feel like if we can stop him from running the ball and make him sit in the pocket and, and really throw the ball, we're going to have a good chance. All right, Trill, we're going to wrap this up. We're getting away from football. Rapid-fire questions. We're putting a minute on the clock for you. We call this two okay, yards. Please. And a cloud of questions. We're coming at you with some weird stuff. All right. Here we go. What was the best binge watch you had during quarantine? Best binge watch. Um, oh, man. That's a hard one. Uh, I say the heist. The heist? Okay. Yeah. Um, we know people were hoarding stuff. Toilet paper, hand sanitizer. Were you hoarding anything during quarantine? Mm. Gushers. Gushers. Okay. Yeah, you got to have snacks. Snack. My favorite food snacks. I had to, had to stack up on those. Hey, you can't miss out on your favorite. All right. We know, hey, six months, a lot of things went weird. What was the event, setting aside football, the event that you had to miss that you were most disappointed that you didn't, didn't get to take part in? Hmm. I say, honestly, I say nothing right now because there's still a chance that we might have Halloween. Okay. Looking okay. forward to Halloween forward with the to gushers. Halloween. With the gushers. All right. What's the meal you ate most during quarantine? Oh, man. Uh, I say probably chicken and rice with some broccoli. That was the that was the go-to. You know, when you got tired of ordering pizza, that was the go-to. All right. You got to be a little healthy, right, to balance out the gushers, huh? Yeah. All right, Trill. That's our minute. You survived. Uh, good luck this week, and uh, it'll be fun to see you back out there in the Dome, huh? Appreciate it. You have a good night.